Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Redberry Wheel here, and welcome to today's video where we're talking about the 24 hour pack. Now, if you're not sure what that is, it is part of your emergency services gear. And if you haven't completed your general emergency services training yet or your GES, please feel free to check out that video and you'll be able to get that done. And then you'll be able to meet one of the requirements for FNP with your 24 hour pack. So, one small thing before we get started, you need to make sure you have a list of all the materials you need. So I will include a link to a version of the 24 hour pack down there. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about the materials that you wear on yourself and then the items that you pack in your bag. So let's go ahead and get started. So the pack list contains a number of items that it says that you need to wear on you. So one of them is your uniform. So on your head, you can wear some kind of helmet or a cap if it's cold outside, you're also authorized to wear a black wool cap. Um, just make sure there's nothing on it. It's just a plain black cap. Um, so additionally, you would need other resources on you like wearing a watch or maybe having some pocket knives of some kind, signal mirror, having a water bottle on you. Um, there's also like your identification. So like your membership ID, having a second form of ID, like a government issued ID if you have one. Um, your civil air patrol forms like there there's an es 101 card which is the card that has all of the qualifications that you have whether you're a trainee or whether you're already fully certified in something or if you're an evaluator it'll be included on that 101 card and then there's also um well it, it says a bunch of different things on this list i'm looking at the list i swear um, there's also like bringing a notepad so that you can take notes. You should bring a notepad of some kind in case your phone dies. Um, bring a phone. You do need to have some kind of reflective gear or like a vest. So you do need to wear that. I think I have mine. Ooh. There's also like an optional comb or brush you can bring with you. I never have personally. Oh wait, no, I was looking for my vest. Excuse me. My vest is actually on the top right here because I typically wear it, so man, I'm gonna need to I'm gonna need to repack my bag after doing this video, but that's okay. It's good to go through your equipment to make sure that you have everything you need. So this is my reflective vest. It's very reflective. It's got the lines on it, and it is a bright fluorescent yellow. Um, whenever you're on a cat mission, you are required to wear eye protective gear, gloves, and a vest in addition to your uniform. So I've got that. Also. You should have a whistle. I have two whistles right here. This one, whoops, excuse me. The compass is tangled with the whistles because they are both in the pockets at the same time. Um, so this whistle, it has a little cork ball in it and the cork ball can get stuck in the whistle. So it, it's still loud, but in the winter it might freeze or like from the humidity of your breath blowing on it, it won't work anymore after a while. So I recommend getting one without the ball in it. Though this style, the one with the ball is cheaper. Getting this one, it's more reliable. And if you do happen to get lost, the ball won't get stuck. So then I also have my compass right here. So those are things I keep in my pocket. So I'm just gonna put those right there. Um, I bring extra bags with me. Extra bags are useful for if you find a clue of some kind. So then um, like, if you're just a ground team member, then, well, not just a ground team member, but if you're one of the ground team members and you find a clue, then you'll radio back to mission base, like, hey, we found a clue. Make sure you communicate with your ground team leader and say, hey, we found a clue. They'll communicate with base with their mission radio operator, whoever that might be, like during that mission. And mission base will say what to do with the clue, whether that be put it into the bag or maybe mark it off with flagging tape. It, it's up to mission base and what they, they need. But it, it ooh, excuse me, some of my bags are falling. Um, it's, it's honestly dependent on the mission and what kind of clue it is. Okay, so also I have a bunch of different flashlights. I have three. Um, this one is really, really bright, but it's also small. This one can serve as a glow stick as well. And then this one is a little bit duller than this one, but it has a wider beam. So I also keep a headlamp on me. And I'm not sure where my headlamp is right now, but ooh, these are called gators. You guys know what gators are? I'll, I'll show you. 
So basically this part goes underneath your foot and you, you wear this on top of your boot and your pants leg, kind of like that. So that would have your leg in there, right there. And well, basically it's to prevent ticks from getting into your, your pants leg. So if you're walking through tall grass or you're walking through um, fields and the woods, ticks are everywhere. Like, let's admit it. And you don't want to get ticks, so you can spray this with all the bug spray, all the DEET that you want, and they're, they're pretty, really durable. They're not super duper cheap, but I have found them to be very useful to prevent chiggers in addition to ticks, and both of which are very annoying. Well, ticks are worse, but chiggers are also very annoying and painful. From what I understand, I've never gotten them. Fingers crossed I don't ever get them. Okay, so continuing on. Ooh, I found my safety glasses. I'm all decked out. Woohoo! And if you have normal glasses, I still recommend you get glasses that like surround more of your eyes, um, just so that it protects your eyeballs as much as you can. Okay, so now I'm, I'm just kind of going through my bag. I found another flashlight. Um, I have a lot of flashlights, but hey, in the event of something happening, I have flashlights available. I also keep my pens and my pencils with a spoon in this bag, just so that I have writing utensils in the bag in the event that I forget wearing them on my person. I also, I, I wear these in my pocket, and then afterwards I, I take take them and I put them back into the bag so that I don't forget anything. Um, I have this multi-use tool as well. It's a bottle opener, it's a spoon, it's a fork. It also has things for nuts and you can open the bottles, you can clip it onto the bag. It's a very nice little tool. And I also keep snacks towards the top of my bag that I sometimes wear in my pocket and then um, if, if I need to keep a snack in the bag afterwards, then I can just take them out and replace them. These might need to get replaced, they're a little crushed. Ah, it says 2017. That may not be good anymore. Make sure you check your bag frequently enough that you're not just leaving old food in there. Um, I also have an extra pair of gloves in here in the event that someone else that I'm working with might need gloves and they forgot their gloves for a mission because I serve as a GTL free services and on little missions. Okay, so bug spray is very important. This says 25% DEET. The higher the DEET, the more it's going to irritate your skin, so try not to get it on your skin. Um, but it also, it, it gets all the ticks and the mosquitoes and everything else away because having to deal with them, it kind of sucks. So I typically put a little bit on my cover. I put it on my roll down sleeves. You wear roll down sleeves for e-services. E you roll them down, put them on the gaiters, put them on the boots, put them everywhere. We've got our bug spray, and there's also some sunscreen in here, which is pretty good. I don't know where it is. It's further down in the bag, I think. Yep, there it is. But this is a poncho. I, I bring the poncho with me so that if it does start to rain, I have it. Some people just bring plastic bags to carry that, and that works too. Hey, it's my headlamp. And it, it actually does two different colors. It, it does the white, and it, it does red and green. So it has different brightnesses. Yeah, see, hee <laughs> hee. Wait, yeah, so that's the green one and that's the red one. I think you can see that on my hand, right? Yeah, hee <laughs> So that's pretty cool. Um, but it's very useful to have a headlamp because if you're looking around in the forest rather than having to use a flashlight, it's just kind of there. Continuing on, I have my first aid kit and the first aid kit, it says you should have uh, personal medication. You wear that on you and make sure that your team leader knows what you're taking and when you need to take it and where you carry it on. Um, so like if you have an EpiPen, that's especially important. Or if you have an inhaler, that's also important. So just make sure that people know. Um, so I have band-aids, tape. Um, I have the first aid blanket, which is like a space blanket. So if someone is very, very cold, and they need to be warmed up. Got this also if I need to just sleep outside and it's very cold outside. I also have PPE, which is the, the blue medical gloves. It's It's been in here for a while, so it's okay. Um, I also have like a wrap. I have some gauze pads. Um, on here it, it says triangular bandage, tape, rubber gloves, 
antiseptic cleansing pads. I have all of those things in here and I have it labeled first aid kit. So I just keep it all in one bag so that it doesn't get all separate from itself. There's my bug spray. And I also have another bag that has bug spray and sunscreen. So it's up to you as to what you want to bring. But I, I have several bottles just, just to have backup. Um, I also have this, which is hot hands. So you can put them in your boots, like where your toes are, or you can put them in your gloves if you're wearing gloves, um, which you should be. And when it's cold outside, or if if some kind of, like if, if you found someone in the wilderness and they're really cold, um, you could always use these to try to warm up their extremities slowly. Uh, yes, more, more bags, but that's more for like dirty boots. Because af after you're out in the wilderness, your boots will get very dirty. This is some nylon rope. It's about 50 feet of it, and the ends are burnt just so that it doesn't fray. And this can be used to, like, set up a shelter. Like, if I have a tarp, then I can just lay the tarp on top of it after I've tied it to two trees. And it, it works pretty well for uh, minor things. But it's not going to be able to, like, carry a person. So... Um, if I needed to mark something too, I could always use this as well. Um, there's also flagging tape for marking things, which I will pull out. Ta-da! And this has, in, the, in this bag, there's a few things. Um, yeah, so there's some hand wipes, there's the flagging tape, and then there's two extra pairs of socks. So whenever you are out in the wilderness, your feet are going to get sweaty or your feet are going to get wet. And in fact, there have been instances where soldiers start to lose the skin off the bottom of their feet because of fungus and it just being so wet all the time that it just kills the cells. So make sure you change your socks frequently enough that your feet aren't always soaked. So at least like every eight hours, at least, if not more frequently, um, just so that your, your feet can breathe a little bit for, for just like a short time when you're changing your socks and stuff and just, you're, you'd be prepared if you have that extra pair of socks, okay? And let's see, I have an extra water bottle in here in addition to another emergency blanket. I also have some duct tape rolled up onto this piece of plastic just so if I, I need duct tape, which is a really useful thing to have, I have available. And I also have a few more snacks, which may or may not be expired and I need to replace. In addition to this multi-tool and some bobby pins and hair ties. So if people find that their cover is coming off, they can always use a, a bobby pin to hold it down. And the hair ties are just kind of to pull hair back if people don't have the materials they need. So I believe that is actually everything that you're required to bring with you. I, let, let me double check to make sure I listed everything in addition to unpacking my stuff. Um, yeah, so I brought I brought all my glow sticks. Where, where's my glow stick? My glow, my glow stick is right here. Yes. Um, I have, like, chem lights can be really useful for marking a bathroom or for my, marking a clue in the dark just so that people can come back to it at night. Um, candy, oh, candy bars. No, not, not candy bars. Don't bring candy bars. Bring snack bars that are high in protein. Those are gonna be helpful. Um, matches and a match container. Um, I think that was in here. The match container is right in here. So that is a good thing to have in your pack. Let's see what else. We've got our, our rope, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna be packing stuff back in. We've got trash bags and bags galore. We love our bags. There's just so many bags. Put those in. Let's see, we've got the signal mirror, which I think was on the top up here. Yeah, if you, if you don't have a signal mirror, you could always use a CD or some kind of reflective surface. Like even a phone screen, it, it may not work super well, but if, if you've got like a really shiny surface on it, you could always try doing that. Um, or setting a fire. Fire and smoke is very good ways to get people's attention. Um, let's see, extra pair of socks, we've got that, we've got the emergency blanket, we've got our Swiss army knife, we've got like three of them, we got multi-tools galore, we've got our four sets of gloves in addition to our first aid kit, we have our flashlights that are still in that top pocket, 
We have the bug spray. We have the sunscreen. Oh, we've got, well, I've got my cell phone. I also have my work gloves, which I'm gonna leave on top. Um, we've got our flagging tape. Ah, uh, what else? Moist towelettes, yeah, we got that too. Um, we have an extra water bottle and I would carry another water bottle in my pocket. And we've, we've got the, the canteen, yeah. We've got the poncho, very good, which, which could be used as shelter material as well. Uh, let's see, MREs plus a few sn snack foods. It depends on the mission you're going on. If you know how long the mission is supposed to be or if food will be provided, then you'll be told. And you may not necessarily need the MREs. But it, it depends on what's available and they'll brief you ahead of time as to what's there. So there's my vest and all my stuff. And you'll see that I actually have uh, a fancier backpack than some people might. It's, it's actually like a hiking backpack from REI. And it's very comfortable. It's got, it's got the frame to it. So it's got this this nice backing and it, it has this frame along the back to distribute the weight more evenly across the back and not to hurt um, all in one spot and so it, it distributes it very nicely. So I, I like it but if you are just starting out with ES and you're not quite 100% sure if you want it super invest into like a backpack or a helmet then you can always just use normal backpack but if you use like some kind of more expensive backpack and you should get something more fluorescently colored, such as this orange or like a yellow, um, even red, like th those brighter colors just so that you're more visible in the wilderness because you're wearing camouflage uniforms, right? So that is my 24 hour pack. Um, the, the 72 hour pack I'll go into a little bit of depth it's just basically bringing hiking equipment and bringing extra sets of clothes on top of what's in this bag. So um, it says bringing five meals, bringing a bag that's waterproof with your spare uniform, underwear and socks and everything, um, bringing a tent, sleeping bag, extra insignia, trash bags, um, extra Ziploc bags, spare boot laces, sewing kit, shoe shine kit. It's basically if you had to do some overnight activity so um, there's also optional items like bringing Gore-Tex, which is like rain resistant gear that is the same pattern as the ABUs or BDUs. And you need to make sure that it's ABU or BDU that matches the uniform you're wearing. Um, they also typically authorize normal rain jackets if they're dark colored. But if you don't really have much of a choice, they would rather you bring a jacket than not bring a jacket, just saying. Um, they, they have entrenching tools, so like a tiny little shovel to dig holes into the ground for certain things, or like a hatchet, bringing more glow sticks, headlamp, all that kind of stuff. So if you do have any questions for me on your 24 hour pack or where you can get materials, please feel free to leave it in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching and that is all folks, until next time, doodles.